God bless uh, Freedom Church and Freedom Church Online. Uh, this is Pastor Robert coming to you from uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It is an honor, a privilege to be able to share a brief word with you. Uh, I just want to bless Pastor Israel, my spiritual son. I'm so proud of what uh, the Lord is embarking you and your wife Stephanie on. So I'm just so proud of you. And I'm, I would just pray that this word uh, that I'm going to share with you uh, it just blesses your life and allow it to just go deep down and, and just Bring forth fruit for your life. I'm so excited to meet you, uh, all of you, in the future very soon. And God bless you. And uh, let's hear the word. How many are blessed to be in the house of God tonight? Amen. We are blessed to be in the house of God. You may be seated. It is a privilege, an honor to be able to be here. Just being here is a blessing for me. And uh, anytime I'm able to fellowship with people who are hungry for the presence of God, uh, for me, it is a blessing. And uh, today I'm going to speak to you uh, briefly um, a message that the Lord uh, deposited in my heart about uh, about a, a month, a month ago, I want to say five weeks ago. And the message is a bit prophetic in nature um, because it's a, a word that the Lord gave me for the situation that we're facing currently. So I'm going to try my best to do it in 20 minutes in a way where you don't lose what God really ministered to my life. Um, but I know that this word is for this season and it's for this church with this vision and these pastors with this leadership. Can you say amen? So uh, I'm going to read to you from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians chapter number three, and I'm going to read verse 17 and 18, second Corinthians chapter number three, uh, I'm going to be reading 17 and 18, uh, if you're watching online, uh, keep your Bible open, uh, listen to this word from the Lord, I firmly believe in my spirit that is for this season, and I firmly believe in my spirit that is going to bless you. And you're going to look at your scenario right now in a, different, in a different lens and through a different perspective. Praise the Lord. So the Word of God says, Now the Lord is spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we are with unveiled face. Let me translate that for you. But we are with an unmasked face. You say hallelujah. With an unmasked face. Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Are being transformed into the same image. From glory to glory. Just as by the Spirit of the Lord. We are blessed by His Word. Amen. I want to preach to you under the theme, Unmasking the Move of God. Unmasking the Move of God. And let me start by just going through some of the purposes of masks. And to illustrate my message, I'm going to uh, put one of these on. Praise the Lord. I don't know how to open this. They must have packed this in China or something. Praise God. Because I want to speak to you about why masks exist. Because they've existed for centuries. They've existed for centuries in, in numerous cultures. And they serve different purposes. It's, it's pulling my ears, right? Obviously, right now, they exist so that we don't spread germs to each other. We're living in the midst of a pandemic. We're living in the midst of people getting sick with the coronavirus. And we don't want to spread our germs. So a mask prevents us from ingesting someone else's germs. And it prevents us from giving our germs to somebody. So one of the reasons why masks are worn is for health. Another reason why masks exist 
is to hide what does not want to be revealed. When you don't want to reveal something, you mask it. Not because you're trying to change the way it looks, but because you don't want no one to see how it looks. You're not necessarily trying to transform the image. You're just trying to hide it. So to hide it, you wear a mask. And the reasons why you might want to hide it or why someone want, might want to wear a mask is because they're ashamed of how they look or because uh, there's something uh, that they're just not comfortable with. But in any event, the mask is being used because the image isn't good enough. So when the image isn't good enough, it needs to be masked. It's interesting how sin operates as a mask and the enemy uses the mask of sin to keep you from realizing that you are good enough. Praise God. When the enemy tries to bring the mask mentality, we end up going through what Adam went through. Adam fell from the grace of God. He fell from the glory. He fell from his divine nature. His perfection was now gone. And the first thing he felt was not good enough. The first thing he felt was that he had to hide. So when God's voice came in the garden, Adam, Adam. When God's voice came in the garden, Adam felt like he needed to hide. And when God asked him, why are you hiding? He says, because I was naked and I was ashamed. So God asked him, then who told you that you were naked? See, God knew that the enemy had a hand in why Adam was trying to hide something. You see, anytime I'm living in a situation where I feel I gotta hide something from God, the enemy is behind that mentality, behind that feeling. Anytime I'm living in a situation when I don't feel good enough, it's because the enemy has been trying to rise up some seeds in my life, uh, to rise up some seeds from my past or some seeds from some bad decisions or some situations that I wasn't necessarily too proud of and now I feel like I can't worship God because the first thing that is compromised when you're wearing a mask before God is your worship. That's why when the woman at the well unmasked herself before Jesus, Jesus was like, woman, I tell you that right now in Israel and in Samaria, there's nobody worshiping God. But from this moment, because of what you have done, the true worshipers worship God in spirit and truth because she unmasked herself. She allowed Christ to say, woman, you, you have five husbands and the one you have isn't your husband. So there was no hiding from the, then when there's no hiding, when there's no shame, when you don't, you don't have that feeling of not feeling good enough, worship comes truly. Worship comes in spirit. Worship comes in truth. And the enemy wants to keep you from worshiping God in spirit and truth. Why? Because he's happy with your religious hallelujah. He's happy with you telling people that you're Christian. He's not happy when you show people that you're Christian. He's happy when you're telling people that you come to church. He's not happy when you're inviting people to come to church. Am I preaching to somebody this afternoon? Because everything the enemy is after is your ability to feel free. Praise God. Everything the enemy is after is your ability to understand that there is no more shame in your life. You might not be perfect. You might still be a work in progress. You might still be under construction. But God has already made you good enough. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the enemy brings a mask mentality to our lives to try to hide because we don't feel good enough. The Bible talks about three occasions, three instances where the idea of a mask or masking something 
was employed. Number one, I already spoke of Adam in the garden. Number two is Jacob in Genesis chapter 27. He wore, he masked himself and clothed himself in the wool of a lamb on his arms and in his face. So as to deceive his father who was going to touch his face and his arms to see if he was his brother. He was after his brother's birthright. So he masks himself to deceive his father who was blind and couldn't see. And the third time was when God masked Moses' face. Do you remember in Exodus chapter 33 when Moses tells God, I want to see your glory. God says, what you're asking is very difficult because no man can see me in flesh and live. But God says, but for you, I'm going to sit you on the rock and when I, my glory passes, I will take my hand off of your eyes. So God masked Moses' eyes so that when he passed him, he could see at least his back. How many know that there is no better glory than the glory of God's back? What does that mean? There's no better glory than the glory of God's backside. Why? Because if you're looking at his backside, that means he's in front of you and not behind you. Glory to God. And as long as he is in front of you and you keep your eyes on him, the storm could rise, but you're going to continue to walk on water. Praise the Lord. So the idea of mass exists even in the Bible. We have all worn masks to hide our shame. We have all worn masks to hide our failures before God. We have all desired something to the degree that we were willing to be like someone else or mask ourselves to look like someone else to receive it. But when God uses a mask, it usually means that he's about to show us something we've never seen before. And the thing with God is that he won't just bless you. He will mask your blessing in a problem. The problem is the enemy only wants you to look at the mask and not what's behind it. But God isn't just going to give you the blessing. He's going to give you an opportunity to grow because there's no greater purpose in your life than you growing. Hallelujah. 30 year Christians that haven't grown are no good to God. My goodness. 30 year, 40 year Christians that they speak in tongues and they know the scriptures and they come to church and they give their time. God bless you. I wish you well. And I hope uh, that you uh, fulfill your purpose in God. But if you haven't grown, God can't use you. God can't do anything with you. So when God uses a mask, he's using it to disguise He's using it to disguise something so great in your life, something so powerful in your life, something so excellent in your life that you need to see past the problem in order to receive it. Because if you see past the problem, you're, you're making yourself compatible with how he sent it. That's why Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he says, not looking at the things that are in this world, not looking at the temporary, not looking at the earthly, but looking at the things from above. He's talking about a real life vision on eternity, a real life vision on what is of God, a real life vision on what comes from above, even though it comes masked in a problem. Joseph says, Joseph's dream manifested, masked as a problem. But he was able to go through the process, unmask the dream, and see it become a reality. So, even Jesus, even Jesus 
was a king. Even Jesus was a lion masked as a lamb. Glory to Jesus. So what did, what does God, what does God do with these masks? Let me ask you this. What did your healing look like before you received it? What did the success of your business look like before you were successful? What did your ministry look like before you got to the level where you understood exactly what you were called to do? What did your stable and strengthened and healthy marriage or relationship look like before you were stable and strengthened? I guarantee you that none of God's greatest works in your life look like works when he first sent them to you glory to God I guarantee you that when God restored you in the beginning you didn't know you were gonna be restored your restoration didn't look like restoration when God started but you see God is trying to get you to know how to overcome trouble know how to overcome a pandemic know how to overcome a narrative and a rhetoric of division and evil how do I overcome that understanding understanding that even though I don't know I, I don't agree with what's going on in my life even though I don't want to be going through this even though I might feel a little uncomfortable even though I, I might have so many questions I know God needs to move through this because if God isn't going to move through this, then Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 makes absolutely no sense when Paul says, for those who love God and are called according to his purpose, all things work for good. Not just the things uh, that come uh, and they look a little bad, all things, uh, cancer can work for good, uh, losing your house uh, can work for good, losing your car can work for good divorce can work for good uh, losing everything you have can work for good if you have to leave this place and go build it somewhere else it will work for good because if you love God and he called you according to his purpose all things not just some all things for things to work out for good that means that they come masked as what they come masked as bad they arrive bad so that's good looking like bad, praise God. That's a blessing looking like a headache. So God, God's greatest works in our lives, they didn't look like that when they first came to us. Because it's not what it looks like or it feels like or it's not what it's being described as. It's not what it's being defined as by others. It's about what God is going to do with it in the end. And your process in the middle, your process in the middle is what's going to change your perspective to be able to see it happen in the end. Because your vision wasn't there when you first received it. That's why you thought it was something else. Praise God. The way you were thinking wasn't good enough, wasn't elevated enough, wasn't spiritual enough. You needed to pray more. You needed to fast more. You needed to commit yourself more. You needed to serve more. In order for you to get to the point where you changed the way you were transformed because God unveiled it. So when God peels a mask from your face, uh, the first thing that happens is a transformation of how you see the situation. That's why you know that you're free because when God took the mask from your face, uh, he took the mask and you were able to see, wait, these aren't chains, <laughs> hallelujah. These are stepping stones to my next level. These, this is not bondage. This is an opportunity for me to manifest the glory of God in my life so he peels the mask mask this is a prophetic word that the Lord shared with me I'm trying to be obedient and stay within the 20 minute time frame COVID-19 is a mask COVID-19 is a mask now I don't know if it was 
God, if it was God's doing, I don't know if it was God's doing or if it was the devil's doing. I don't know if it was China and the Democrats. Praise God. I don't know if it was Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton, and Joe Biden. Or if it was George Soros, Black Lives Matter, and Antifa. None of it matters. None of it matters. I want you to hear me that none of it matters. It doesn't matter if this is a sham or if this is real. It doesn't matter if this is, if this is going to last long or if it's going to end in a few months. What matters is, is that God is going to prove to the world that even in the middle of chaos, even in the middle of uncertainty, even in the middle of a time where nobody knows what to do, he is going to show off. He is going to unmask uh, uh, the greatest move of our lifetime. I'm talking about people who wouldn't have been saved if not for COVID are going to start coming to church or they're going to see a live stream on Facebook and they're going to get saved. If it wasn't for COVID, they wouldn't have been quarantined in their house. They wouldn't be watching Facebook or YouTube and they wouldn't accept Christ. So God is going to start Start a move. I don't know if you can lift up your hands right there on your couch or right there in your kitchen or sitting right here in this room and say, God is going to move greater than he's ever moved before. I can feel it. I can believe it. He's going to take off the mask. He's going to take off the mask of chaos. He's going to take off the mask of fear. He's going to take off the mask of division. He's going to take off the mask of desperation. And he is going to move. My goodness. He is going to move. He's already started moving. He's going to continue to move. But it's going to be such a manifestation that what the devil tried to paralyze, God is going to push forward. Oh, Lord Jesus. What the devil tried to put in a box, God is going to disappear the box entirely. What the devil tried to bind, God is going to bless. Hallelujah. What the devil tried to step on, God is going to lift up in this time in Jesus' name. The statistics will show you that the COVID-19 pandemic has had a very, very negative impact on churches and this impact is described as very problematic they're saying that there's going to be a lot of churches that are going to close they're saying that people shouldn't go to church and if you go to church you shouldn't sing you see what the enemy is trying to do he's trying to take your worship because in your worship there is freedom and in your freedom you are good enough. So understanding how to deal with all of these feelings that I feel sometimes in my life, I don't feel like I'm good enough. I don't feel like God is hearing me. I don't feel like the purpose is real. I don't know what I'm doing in this church. I don't know what I'm doing in this youth group. I don't know what I'm doing with this pastor. I don't know what I'm doing with this church plan. I don't know what I'm doing here. Those are all masked feelings. Those are all mass feelings. And once God takes that mask off, the first thing he's going to transform is your, is your vision so that you can see, wait, this, this, isn't, this isn't loneliness that I feel. This is, a, an, a, this is a hunger that I feel. And the hunger isn't for company. The hunger is for God's presence. Praise the Lord. Uh, so I want you to understand today that God wants you to unmask the move of Holy Spirit in your life in this season. Everybody, everywhere you go, you have to wear a mask to enter, even into church. The one place you no longer have to wear a mask is the place where you have complete liberty. Because where the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. So freedom means spirit of God hallelujah and where there is spirit of God there is healing there is restoration there is financial breakthrough there is restoration for your marriage for your children for your family where the spirit of God is it's not just a song they're not just lyrics on a screen it's not just a bible verse it is a declaration 
that the devil can try, but he will fail at every turn if he's trying to bind me again. If he's trying to bind my mind again, he's going to fail. Why? Because not only does Paul teach that where the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. But later on, he teaches that where that Spirit dwells is not in heaven, it's in you. So therefore, if the Spirit of God is in you, and where the Spirit of God is, there is freedom, that means that you are free. You are free. Because the Spirit of God has made you free. He has made you free from your shame. He has made you free from your guilt. He has made you free from your low self-esteem. He has made you free from your desperation. He has made you free from your depression. And all you have to do is say, God, I'm ready for you to take off this mask and change, transform the image of your glory. Transform it. Because I'm seeing it as a problem. I'm seeing it as an, uh, an, uh, a goal I cannot accomplish. I'm seeing it as a mountain I can't climb. But if you change my sight, I'll be free to see it as a mountain that I'm going to use to show my enemies who you are. So the prophetic word that God gave me was that COVID-19 is a mass that the, that the evil in this world has used to provoke a fear, a division, and a desperation, seeking to paralyze the very world that God is going to manifest his power upon. How do I know this? What proof do I have of this? Because anytime evil wants to stop a move of God, he starts with the church. Anytime hell wants to detain see because I gotta say this I have to say this I know I'm running out of time but I have to say this Satan is an eternal being Satan was an angel made by God who was put in command of worship here on earth not in heaven here on earth he had authority over angels Satan has eternal instincts Satan has eternal instincts being a fallen angel, he has eternal instincts. Demons have eternal instincts. They know what's going on in the spiritual realm. So they can sense when God is present and when he is not. That is why in the 400 years of silence, hell was let loose on earth. Because there was no presence of God. There was no word from the Lord. But once John the Baptist opened his mouth and said, prepare the way of the Lord, I declare the year, the pleasurable year of the Messiah. The, the demons understood that a move was coming. Praise God. So Satan has eternal instinct. He knows when there's a move of God coming. And when he wants to detain the move of God, he will start with the catalyst that God has put here on earth to provoke that move, to push forward that move, and that is the church. Oh, but thank God that in Matthew chapter 16, uh, Jesus said, I will build my church on the rock and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. If you are the church, uh, you are free to understand and provoke the move of God in this season of your life. No matter what the enemy is trying to make you see, it's not what it seems. It's not what it seems. Take the mask off. Unmask it so that you can see that God is going to move. Father, I thank you and I honor you for this word that you have given us. I thank you because you are moving even now. You are moving even now, God. And even though we're living in uncertain times, we are certain about one thing. We are certain that our God will never forsake us, will never leave us. And he will be faithful in these uncertain times. So we have peace. We have certainty. We have security. Because you are our God. 
So we pray in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, we pray that right now, God, any, any feelings of not being good enough, any feelings of shame, any feelings of, uh, of, of feeling uncomfortable with oneself, of uncertainty, of not knowing what's going on, not knowing where I'm going, not being able to feel your presence, we pray that that be unmasked today, God, that you would unmask, Lord God, your move and your glory in our lives so that we may become part of the greatest revival that this earth is going to see before you return. So I bless this church. I bless the pastors. And I just pray that it is a, it's a direct takeoff from here. Takeoffs are always turbulent. Takeoff ha always come with shaking. Takeoff always come with, with movement that we're unsure of. But there's nothing better than, than, than understanding that you're going to a next level. There's nothing better than elevation. So I pray in Jesus' name over this ministry. Elevation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, give God a hand. God bless you. God keep you. Amen.